Well, uh, welcome. I'm glad to see you too. Um, uh, it's, I always love these these uh, these shareholder meetings. I mean, I tell uh, you know I tell people like you know doing the shareholder meeting, and it's like, man, I always feel like a party, and uh, I love seeing you guys, and, and it's like, and they're like, really? That's not like normal shareholder meetings. <laughs> um, so. Uh, I'm going to go through the, through the kind of a high-level overview. I think it's been a really great year for, for Tesla, and I think there's even better years to come. And I'll, so I'm going to talk talk about that, and then try to answer. Um, I think I think there's 20 questions that we have on the uh, the list um, that were submitted by Twitter. Uh, there's certainly some some really interesting questions that were submitted, um, and. Uh, some interesting correlations that were drawn. Um, we couldn't get to them all, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll try to get to, I think, the, uh, the 20 that I think are most significant for the year ahead of us. So, so really, the, one of the key things that happened this year is the, the beginning of the transition of Tesla to a fully integrated sustainable energy company, uh, where um, you have solar uh, creating the energy, uh, then the, the stationary battery pack, the power wall and power pack storing the energy, and then that energy being used in an electric vehicle. Now, the great thing about this is it's, it's, it, it answers all, it, it's a fully, uh, it's a fully contained energy solution that could, could scale for the whole world. And I'm going to um, get into that for a moment. But it's something where you can imagine as far in the future, well, well beyond human civilization, which I hope lasts a really long time, um, uh, that that this is something that that would last for really, you know, this is this this works, and 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 there I think there are no unanswered questions, um, you know, even the, the even the Giga factory or the Giga factories that that make these products will be powered by sustainable energy. So like, I, I really don't think there's any um, hole in, left in the argument. Uh, you know, because when we're making electric cars, people would say that, well, they're just, uh, they're really coal powered. And, and there's like the long tailpipe, you know, and the type tailpipe's really over there by the power plant. And we're like, yeah, but you know, we, we're gonna have sustainable energy generation too. Um, and, and then, but, but then you can still have gasoline cars. So you've got to have electric cars, sustainable, sustainable energy uh, production, and then you've got to store that energy because the sun don't shine at night. Real simple. One, two, three. <laughs> it has been amazingly difficult to explain this. <laughs> I'm like, it's only three pictures there, man. <laughs> like, I mean, come on. <laughs> so, um, with the solar roof, um, the, the, the solar roof we're really trying to address at the residential level, I think one of the fundamental inhibitions of, of, of adding solar, which is aesthetics. Um, people love their homes. They want their homes to be beautiful. Um, and if you've, got, if you've got a sloped roof home, that means you, you ha have to have solar uh, integrated into the roof itself. Um, and so what we created here, I think, is something that's going to be incredibly revolutionary, where it's beautiful. In fact, I think it looks better than a normal roof. Um, in, in doing this, we were trying to find examples of roofs, and, and it's like, man, Take a look at roofs next time you're driving down the road, and you're like, whoa, they're not good. Um, so this is a roof that's going to be better looking than a normal roof. Um, it, it's going to last practically forever. Um, like, I wanted to have an, an infinite year warranty, but then the finance department said, well, that's difficult to account for. <laughs> um, so I said, well, OK, it's infinite, or when your house falls down, whichever comes first. Um, You'll get the message across. Um, but basically, it's going to la last forever. You think of like, like a cathedral with stained glass windows. Those stained glass windows are about the only thing, and the, and the stone walls, the only thing that's lasted over half a, half a millennium. Um, so, um, so, so great looking, durable, um, affordable when you consider the cost of a roof and the cost of, of, uh, of electricity from the utility. And this is going to vary quite a lot by, by region. So it depends on what property taxes are, what uh, the cost of financing is, and what the cost of power from the utility is. 
Um, but um, I, we're, we're confident that this is going to be something that is um, e either actually makes you money or is close to break even for most of the country, uh, which I think is, is really, really profound. Now, there's still a, there's still a very important role uh, for the traditional uh, kind of flat panel uh, uh, solar. And so that's still going to be a very important part of our business going forward. Uh, because whenever you've got a flat roof situation, which is most commercial installations are flat roofs, and uh, or if you've got a residence that's got a flat roof and the, and it's not visible from the street, then 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 there's no need to go with um, with solar glass tiles because aesthetics are no longer a factor. You can't see it. So that's, I just want to emphasize that that traditional uh, solar. It's still going to be a very important part of the, of, of the business going forward. Um, also, if somebody's got a brand new roof, that they probably don't want to replace the roof right away, and it's still going to make sense to have retrofit solar. And uh, you know, these these are the what you're seeing cycling through are the kind of the first four. We're starting off with two, which is the kind of the the the, the black slate and the text and the textured slate, um, and then um, ho hopefully by early next year we'll be in production with the Spanish tile and the, uh, the, the, the French slate uh, versions. And then we'll be more over time. Uh, but the overarching goal here is, is, is to have a set of products or, or a set of roof products where if you were driving through a neighborhood and you looked at the roofs, you said, like, wow, I really like the way this, those roofs look. Um, roofs don't get a lot of attention, um, but, but, they, but we, we, want, we want something. We, we want to create, it's like if you can imagine the future, um, and what it looks like, that that's something that you want. Then, then obviously that needs to be, com that needs to be paired with uh, stationary storage with a battery pack. Uh, the battery packs are important for a number of reasons, and they, uh, um, because the solar, solar power obviously peaks during the middle of the day, and then it's low at dawn and dusk, and it's not there at night. So you need something that is uh, load leveling the power, so it's, it's storing it uh, when there's high power generation, releasing it when you when you have low power generation, um, and this is going to be important for uh, grid stability as uh, as solar scales. So as there's more and more solar, it's more and more critically important that there be uh, batteries to load level the grid um, and enable a full transition to sustainable energy. Um, so that oh, and then it has a, a great a great advantage which. I think it's, it's the kind of thing where you only really notice it when the power's out. Like, there were frequent power outages um, because a substation went down or a bird flew into wires, uh, or in many parts of the world, power is intermittent, and they have to have uh, generators which run on very expensive diesel fuel. Um, but, but even you know, here in California, we, we know we're due for the big one. <laughs> but it's been saving up. <laughs> you know? um, so there's going to be you know, earthquakes in California. There'll be, there'll be hurricanes in the southeast. Uh, there'll be ice storms in the northeast. Uh, there's floods. There's, there's all sorts of things that cause uh, electricity interruption. Um, and, and we're very dependent on electronic devices. So people might say, well, it's not a problem. I'll call 911. Well, how are you going to do that if your phone don't, is dead? OK, that's real hard. Um, and you know, if, if, if all your devices are, are gone because of a power outage, um, we're so dependent on devices these days that it's actually a significant safety and security concern. So the nice thing about having the Powerwall, particularly the Powerwall 2, is that it's, it's, uh, it's like having an uninterruptible power supply for your house. And like I said, it's like buying insurance. So it's sort of like the kind of thing that when, when you need it you, really, you really need it. And so I think that's a, an important advantage that uh, is uh, sometimes uh, overlooked. And we've got the, the power pack side. This is for um, big utility uh, scale installations, as well as, I should point out, a very important market, which is uh, commercial and industrial. Uh, so we've done some of the biggest, uh, in fact, maybe the, I think the biggest, uh, still the biggest um, uh, battery installation in the world in Southern California. Um, and that took over from what was a natural gas peaker. And that's an operation, it's doing well. We've got a, a huge system in um, Hawaii, in Kauai, which is responsible for 20% of Kauai's peak power generation. Um, and then we've got 
a system in American Samoa which powers the whole island. It's totally off grid. Um, and I think that's a, that's, that's a, a great example of what the, where, of the potential. Because in the limit, a continent is, is a big island. Okay, <laughs> it's a big island, but it's called a continent. Um, if you can make, if you, can t if you take an island and, and have that completely run on solar and, and batteries, you, you can do that with a continent. Um, so the potential there, I think, is, is incredibly exciting. Uh, we've also, now with the latest version of the phone app, integrated the, uh, uh, the, the Powerwall and solar with the Tesla app. So now you can see on your, uh, on, uh, in terms of the list of products, so it no longer says just vehicles, it says products. So now you can see the Powerwall is on there um, and solar. So you can see the status of your Powerwall. You can see what your, whether your solar system is functioning well, how much energy you're producing. Um, it'll show you um, yeah, how much energy you're producing, how much is being stored, how much is being consumed, um, and, um, and, 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 and then how that relates to the car. And so you have a really well-integrated system that combines solar uh, storage and your, your vehicle. And, um, and I think there'll, there'll be a few other things in the future that maybe people aren't expecting as well. So you can see uh, your, your energy usage during the day, so you can tell if maybe you should be turning off certain devices or uh, reprogramming your uh, air conditioning system. Um, and uh, it gives you a good idea of like um, w where you're using power that you may not even realize that you're using. And if you are drawing energy from the grid, it'll tell, not, tell you how much energy you drew from the grid and how much you powered yourself. Um, so I think it's, and this functionality is just going to get uh, better and better. This is what's working today. So this is not speculative. This is the current app that does this. Um, from the standpoint of the customer experience, we're going to make a significant increase in the number of retail stores we have around the world. We think we've really barely touch the surface of what's possible on the retail side. Um, if you just do a back of the envelope analysis and say, you know, in, in the US, there's about 330 million people. Um, how many stores per person should we have? Or how many, you know, how many people per store? It seems like probably over time, we'd want at least one store for every half million people. So that's you know, 660 stores right there. Um, it, you know, in, in China, it would be thousands of stores, or throughout the world, it would be several thousand stores. Um, so that's, you know, our plan is to, to keep expanding the retail store footprint to be able to cover uh, anyone who could uh, want to buy our product. Uh, service has gotten better and better, so we now have fast lanes in service. So the wait times for service have gone down dramatically. It's obviously very important for uh, the Model 3. Uh, we're also adding a lot more uh, service centers in anticipation of Model 3 production. Um, and we're, this year, we will double the number of Tesla uh, superchargers in the world. So we'll double one year over year. And I think next year, probably at least 50% increase, maybe double again next year. This gives you just a sense for how many superchargers there are in the world. It's worth noting this is actually the only high-speed charging network in the world. There isn't, there isn't even a second one. I asked our, our head of the head of our supercharger program, um, okay, well, what's the second best high-speed charging network in the in the world? And he said, well, there's this one place in the Netherlands, uh, but it's I think it's only like 60 or 70 kilowatts, but there's only one of it. Okay, like well, and it's, and off, it usually doesn't work. Okay, all right. All right, 